St. John Vianney was attacked by the devil for 35 years. So today we're going to look at some of the attacks that he experienced and then what we can learn from his experience, because I think there's some real important lessons for us today. Now, St. John Vianney, when he was assigned to the parish in Ars in France, at when he was going there for the first time, the story is he wasn't sure how to get there. And he saw a young boy and he said to the young boy, can you show me the way to ours? And I will show you the way to heaven. Well, he remained true to those words. And when he arrived in ours in France, it was a small village, about 250 people. And it is said that they weren't very devout. And so St. John Vianney took to prayer. He took to fasting and interceding for his people. And soon great conversions started happening, not only in his own parish, but people by the thousands started coming to ours. And he would hear their confession. During the summer, it is said that he heard confession up to 16 hours a day. It's a long time, which means he didn't have a lot of time to sleep. <laughs> And the devil knew it. So at nighttime, he would be attacked by the devil and his sleep would be interrupted. Things that he experienced were pots and pans banging during the night, disrupting his sleep. He would hear yelling of the demons. He would hear the singing of demons. I wonder what kind of tune they were singing. Um, he heard the thunder of horses running through his room while he was trying to sleep. And there's even stories of him being dragged from his bed and his bed catching on fire. Needless to say, St. John Vianney experienced a lot of diabolical attacks. And it's said that these attacks seemed to increase the day before a great sinner was going to come to him in the confession. And there was something that I read that really struck me. It said that one day the devil yelled at him and said, If there were three of you, my kingdom would be destroyed. Now, when I heard that, I thought, what in the world does a priest's faithfulness in a small little town, village in Ars, France, have to do with threatening the kingdom of darkness that seeks to wrap itself all the way around the world? Now, here is the important lesson for us, friends. I want to read to you from St. John Paul II regarding the communion of saints. Every soul that rises above itself raises up the world. To this law of ascent, there unfortunately corresponds the law of descent. Consequently, one can speak of a communion of sin, whereby a soul that lowers itself through sin drags down with itself the church and, in some way, the whole world. In other words, there is no sin, not even the most intimate and secret one, that exclusively concerns the person committing it. This is the extremely important lesson, friends. St. John Vianney was focused on just being a good priest. He would pray for his people. He would fast. He would sacrifice for their conversion. He wasn't working for the conversion of the whole world. He was working for the conversion of his people. And because he was faithful to his duty, he was winning the conversion of the world. How does this relate to you? All you have to do is be faithful to your duty and rise above yourself and you raise the world to Jesus Christ. You don't need a YouTube channel. You don't need to be an evangelist traveling around the world trying to save souls. All you have to do is be you and be good at being you. In other words, be the person that God has created you to be. Be a saint in your circumstance, fulfilling your duties with love. And did you know if that if you do that, you can save thousands of souls. This is not hyperbole. This is not exaggeration. It, you just have to be loving Jesus in your current circumstance. So what does that mean? We could be a faithful Catholic. Go to Mass regularly, every Sunday, during the week if you can, pray every day, regularly receive the sacraments of the Eucharist, confess your sins regularly. You do the basic things that a Catholic is supposed to do 
and focus, laser focus your attention on your duties, doing them with excellence out of love for Jesus Christ, and you can save thousands of souls. That's true. The thing, I think most people have never heard this, and most people, people wouldn't believe it. But that's true about you. See, this was true about St. John Vianney. He wasn't focused on trying to save the world. He was just focusing on, on his duty because his duty was being a good priest. So who are you? Be a good mom. Be a good dad. Be a good grandpa, a grandma. Be a good student. Be faithful as a single person. Whatever your state of life is, live it well. And believe that when you're faithful to your duty offered to Jesus Christ, you can win grace for the whole world. You raise the soul, you raise the world to Jesus Christ. Conversely, when we aren't faithful, when we neglect our duty, when we neglect Jesus Christ, when we embrace sin, there is no such thing as a secret sin. We hurt ourselves. We steal grace from those around us and we drag the whole world down with us. So when we find ourselves being a drag, instead of raising up the world with us, what do we do? We go to confession. This is what Father Fernandez says. But when a Christian goes to confession, the whole church receives an incalculable benefit. Every time a priest pronounces the words of absolution, she rejoices and is mysteriously enriched because Every confession through the communion of saints sends blessings which resound through the whole mystical body of Christ. So have you ever heard that before? A private confession, so your experience in the sacrament of confession, not only wins grace for yourself, but sends blessings out to the entire mystical body of Christ. Faith Again, faithfulness to our duties wins grace for other people. There's this a ripple effect. I, I, here's an example. I love, I love fishing. I love fishing on the northern lakes in Saskatchewan. And there's nothing that I love more than being out on a lake on a calm morning or evening and then casting out. And as soon as that hook hits the water, what happens? Ripple effect. And if it's a perfectly calm lake, that ripple can extend for kilometers or for you Americans, miles <laughs> in one direction. Simply by a little drop into the lake, a little act of faithfulness has ripple effects. There's nothing that is insignificant in our life. Every moment, every duty that is presented before us can win grace for others, and it also can steal grace from others. And when we find ourselves failing, we go to the sacrament of confession, and that act of confessing our sin to the priest not only wins grace for ourselves, but grace for other people. To value frequent confession is a sign of spiritual refinement and love of God. To despise it or to be indifferent to it suggests inward coarseness and frequently a real blindness to spiritual realities. Here's a heart check, friends. What's your attitude towards the sacrament of confession? Uh, Father Fernandez is saying if we don't frequent it, we don't see the value of it going regularly, it's a sign of coarseness of the heart and a blindness to spiritual realities. Conversely, Regularly participating in the sacrament of confession is a sign of love of God. So, check your heart. What's your attitude towards this sacrament? A confession made with consciousness of its supernatural nature is a real act of love for God. In the depths of our soul, we hear Christ say, as he said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And we too can answer in the very words of the Apostle, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you in spite of everything. Yeah, I wasn't going to share this part, but you know, like last night as, as I was preparing for this video, I found myself meditating upon these words. Simon, son of John, do you love me? And his response, Lord, you know I love you despite everything. And then I felt Jesus saying these words to me. 
Ken, son of David, do you love me? And I found it hard to be able to say yes, despite of everything. <laughs> because the reality is, when I look into my heart, I know that I've had mixed motivations in trying to serve Jesus, being self-interested, caught up in my pride, caught up in worrying about what other people think, worried more about my reputation than being faithful. And I only share this with you in case it helps you. The last two years, I've been continuously, constantly reevaluating <clears throat> the last 20 years of my life of full time Catholic ministry. And if I'm honest, I recognize a lot of mixed motivations in what I have done. I think I can, we can fool ourselves to think that because somebody is in ministry, that they're serving God. Well, the truth is sometimes you can be in the ministry that on the outside looks like you're serving God, but really you're self-serving. And so I feel like the Lord has been showing me my impure motives. And so what do I do? Well, I go to confession. And so I share this with you and just ask you, do you have impure motives for the things that you do, even though they're good things? Now, that doesn't mean we should stop doing those good things because our motives might not be pure. If we wait for pure motives before we start acting good, we might not act good for our whole life. <laughs> Sometimes the act of trying to do something good is the process of purification. And so when we fail, then we rise or raise ourselves up and we seek Jesus in the sacrament of confession. And so, my friends, I'm, I'm just going to ask you to do that too. Go to confession. Go regularly. Seek Jesus. I don't claim to be a great saint. Uh, I'm trying. Would you try with me? Because I'd be honored to have you on this journey. Let's do this together. Thanks for watching, friends. God bless you.